What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Vince and recently we've been doing videos about this new offering for Milwaukee. It's the three-in-one backpack vacuum. If you haven't seen those videos, you can go on over here and check it out. But the very cool gang, our community here on YouTube has some great questions and today we're going to give you those answers. Yo, this thing really sucks. <laughs> number one is the backpack vac ambidextrous well as a backpack vac you know it the 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 hose connects on the right side but you could hand it off to the left hand if you needed to do your delicate vacuuming work with your with your strong hand I guess you could put it in the left hand but people are also forgetting that this vacuum works in two other manners one as a canister vac and three you could hang it on a ladder. So yes, it is ambidextrous. Number two, can you grab things like the handle while it's on your back and then put them back in place? So you can see we could grab the handle, all right? We can grab our hose, we can pop it in place, we go to work, right? Once it's off, unless you're really skilled and really have like some muscle memory, uh, I think you might have to pull it off to put it back in place. <laughs> Maybe over time, I'd be able to build up that muscle memory if I was to use this every day. God. Got him! <laughs> How does the vacuum do with picking up mixed debris? that includes maybe nails or screws. Let's take a look. Quite frankly, if you're on a job site that has this type of debris with these long screws in a concentrated area, I might suggest running a magnet over this first, but let's just see how it does. So as you can see, it'll pick up some smaller screws, some smaller nuts. It will take all the particulate sawdust out of this mess so that you could just use a gloved hand, just like mine, and pick these up. Sorry everybody, I guess you're gonna to have to bend over and pick up these larger bolts and screws. What can you do? Question number C. That is a wet dry backpack three in one vac, right Vince? Well, although Milwaukee uses the specification for sealed suction and states it has a 76 inch H2O lift, it's not a wet vac at all. It's just a measurement that, I don't know, it's a specification that they use to measure the lift or suction of the vacuum cleaner. But you're not supposed to be vacuuming water or wet materials with this backpack vac. Question number four. How does it do with fine particulate, like silica dust? Does the HEPA filter really work?
It looks like it does pretty good on fine particulate. If you didn't have a HEPA filter in place, or you had a shop vac that didn't allow for a HEPA filter, you could have a massive amount of particulate in the air. If you have things like smoke detectors, it could set them off. And that would mean having the fire department come to your business or come to somebody else's business if you do janitorial work for them or you're on a construction site or like in a Best Buy and you're installing fixtures and you're drilling a concrete floor, you could have a visit from the fire department. You won't have to worry about this with this vac. It has a HEPA filter. All of the fine particulate seems to be kept in the canister and all fresh air comes through that HEPA filter. Now, if you don't clean your vacuum regularly, you maybe could encounter some particulate escaping and getting into the air, but with regular maintenance, you would avoid that. If you abuse the tool, your mileage may vary. Oh my God, look at the mess you made. Ah. So people have asked us, how does that vacuum do? It's the walk of shame. How does the vacuum do on carpet? Let's see. pretty good. Just remember, it's a job site vacuum, even with the floor tool. There's no beater, there's no beater bar here. Okay, so you're going to be removing the dust and debris that's on top of the carpet. You're not going to have that beater brush to really dig into the carpet. You might need something that has a beater brush, like a walk-behind vacuum cleaner. But you saw the amount of debris on the carpet. The vacuum did a pretty good job of removing all that large particulate and even some of the small particulate, you know, it, it definitely cleaned the carpet. You may be better served for deep cleaning this carpet, something with a beater brush. Another question was, how much vacuuming can you do until stuff starts getting stuck in the hose? Well, we talked about this in our other video. You're going to want to clean your canister frequently. It may help with the service life of your HEPA filter. So how long would it take? Well, it takes about a gallon's worth of material. When you get to the level of the hose, that's it. It's going to clog the hose. There's not going to be anywhere for the debris to go. So empty your canister. Look at that. See that cat hair? How it fell right off? You see that? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Hey Vince, how do you clean that HEPA filter? Well, Milwaukee says never rinse the HEPA filter with water. All you should do to clean that HEPA filter is bang it on a trash can or use compressed air from the opposite side to blow it clean. Another question is, hey Vince, does this vacuum suck? Yeah, it sucks. And finally, hey Vince, how does the vacuum do on things like hardwood floors? I think it does really good. The floor tool has some wheels on it. Okay, they seem to be non-mooring. So you should be okay. But with high gloss finished floors, things of that nature, your mileage may vary. Be very careful. You might want to test in a inconspicuous area of the floor before you go ham 
and start vacuuming the whole floor. Other thing is, is that if you're going to be using this vacuum in mixed environments, let's just say it's a, a contractor vacuum that you're using on job sites to pick up things like nails and screws or metal shavings, you then at that point want to be very careful before coming into a finished space and vacuuming hardwood floor. Why? Because the, the floor tool is made out of plastic. Metal shavings and, and hard debris could get lodged into the plastic of the floor tool and then dig into your hardwood floor. So be very careful when transitioning from job site to job site, job type to job type. With that, I want to say I appreciate every single one of you being here. If you like the content and you like the answers, smash the like button. Everybody, I hope it helped. We'll see you on the next one. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.